This time I'm doing Cavern, which is a uh, fan favorite that I pray we do a tournament on. Preferably in the Mumble variety. Uh, but yeah, so this is Spawn. I'm going to give you a little chest right here because a chest on this map, I can tell you, is uh, kind of difficult to figure out. Um, I think I have the best one, though. Figured this one out like a month ago or whenever it came out. Uh, so off spawn, what you're going to do is you're going to jump down here right away. You're going to have speed. Surface right here. And you're going to go up the ladder. Because this is the best chest in the entire map and probably of any map. Um, this one right here has a sharpness 2 book with arrows. And that is ridiculously good for a few reasons. There's a few reason things you can do with this book. And you're going to continue up here and to grab the two XP bot three XP bottles up here with the golden carrots. Another good chest. Getting those two chests, mainly the bottom one, but the other ones right above it, is really good. You want to be the first one into this in the mushroom house. Once you get up here, what you're going to want to do is aim for. Watch out for this. Um, don't hit the ceiling. Make this jump right here, then fall down here. Grab these two XP bottles and then surface from the from the chest and grab these five XP bottles. That is the single best route in the game. Getting those four chests in that order is the chest that you should absolutely go for. After that, there's one more good chest on the map. So let's say you're here, you jump down, you're gonna wanna follow the staircase this way and take a left in this granite cave, this one. All the granite caves look the same to me. It's so annoying trying to find this chest. And there's a four more XP balls with a golden pickaxe plus some a gold vein. And that's every chest no, that's noteworthy, I'm pretty sure. That's like but your odds are you're probably not gonna get this one if you're doing this chest out because it is a good chest, and if somebody doesn't take your chest out, they're gonna get to it first. But this is more important to do that. Um There's one more chest. I think there's only one more, there might be more, but that's all the good ones. It's uh this one over here. Yeah. It's got some TNT and vines and crap in it. It's not very good. Post walls fall. This map probably is the most interesting strategy wise as far as like collecting loot. Because there's really a lot of things you can do. Um after the walls fall You're gonna wanna Oh god, there's so much you can potentially do here. I want to start by saying that the side chests have two chests, an instant health too, and a golden apple, which is ridiculously good healing. I feel like not having at least one person on each side to get these, preferably the gap first, if you're going to be fighting another team who's got people over here. Having at least one person on each side to make sure you get these chests is critical because they are really good healing. But considering this map actually does have a lot of gold, it's not as critical but it still is a very good side chest and if you somehow get like if you like do a loop around the entire thing instead of going for mid and get all the side chests it's insanely good but that's probably not going to happen in a tournament um so what you could do is you could have one one person on each side one to two people on each side but either do two 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 like you know what i'm saying two 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 or one four one Either one's fine, probably, just depending on your strategy. Get the sides and then go this way towards mid, theoretically, and try to get one of these two diamond sword chests. If, only if, you either want to come to mid and help your team up here, or come to mid and try to get a diamond sword chest. They're risky, and you're only going to do them if you're, if you're saving the sharpness 2. You could use the sharpness 2 to easily make a sharpness 3 iron, which is what I typically do. But I know I know other people, what they'll do is they'll, they'll hold the sharp 2, grab the diamond sword and make a sharp two diamond which is arguably better than the sharp three iron it does 0.25 less damage but it has more crits um and the math might line up so actually the damage doesn't matter so it's probably better than sharp three iron by a little bit maybe it's close but it is more risky but overall it costs less level so if you know if you really think you can get the diamond sword then do that because it is like i said it's risky so it's hard but in a especially in a tournament but yeah, that's probably the strategy post walls fall. Um, but if you're one of the four people, the four to two people up here, you're gonna stand right here before the walls fall and go for the diamonds. It's um, it's a lot of diamonds on this map. There's a power two punch two bow with some arrows and efficiency two pickaxe. Efficiency two pickaxe is pretty good, plus some arrows and a 
a very mediocre bow. I mean, it's all right, but but there's a good, there's a good amount of diamonds on this map. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen diamonds. It's just it's it's a vulnerable spot because like you're gonna be down here mining this. If your team can protect you, then yeah, go for it. If your team can like actively protect you from other teams rushing or if there's nobody else happens to be rushing then yeah because you do have a protection like from arrows and stuff but you don't have a protection from them jumping you if they get by your team if your team's not protecting you well enough um or whatever or if somebody tries to tnt this then you, you're kind of screwed I'm not gonna lie but it has more protection than like a battlefield or something or a map where the diamonds are completely floating in the open but it's just it is a little cluttered so both shots yeah you're protected from but tnt are getting jumped it's hard to it can be hard to escape other than that there, there really isn't much to the map i mean there's a lot to the map but like that's what the chests are that's a strategy right after the walls fall the side chests are very fruitful the bottom of the mid has a strategy too if you want to go for that and the mid has a ton of diamonds so there's a bunch of loot and a bunch of different types of places which like the, the moments right after the walls fall can be really interesting on this map i'm really interested to see how a tournament would go um, on this map, I feel like the strategy wise, it's the most interesting one. Not to mention the layout of the map is completely different from any other high pixel map. The whole thing's, or any walls map in general, uh, the whole thing's obviously underground. A lot of places to run as a team. It's gonna be interesting to see how teams get pushed. Um, I, I honestly like running this, like riding this wall up as an escape route. I mean, they can like cut you off, but not if you go up and then dig into the wall. I feel like it's a really good way to get away like that. Um, other than that, how you're going to want to get away is just, I mean, the caves, dude. They're, they're, it's just a maze. You can go all the way up here, you know, shoot them back, place cobwebs, do whatever you want. Because it's not that, you know, wide of a cave. You can, you should be able to land your bow shots. Um, and then you can either go out here and just completely switch sides or just keep going up. It's, I mean, it's a total maze, this map, dude. It's, it's insane. Like, there's multiple different ways you can go. You can go all the way up here and with, without even going, I went the wrong way. Without, without even going down at all, you can, like, stay in the roofs. This is, like, the, this is, like, above the map. This is, like, in the, like, the roof of the cave. You can literally go all the way over here and cross quadrants without ever touching the ground. It is insane how you can get away on this map ridiculously quickly. Like, there, there's not many places to corner somebody and just have them dead to rights on this map. I feel like getting away is easier on this map. So it's really, it's going to be really interesting. That's all I can really say. I I'm, I don't have experience in, like, a tournament on this map. Nobody does. So I think it's going to be really interesting, especially the first tournament, to see what happens on this map. I mean, it's not going to be a map that, that's going to consistently be played for, um, for tournaments, unfortunately. I don't see it going that way, but it's got to be at least one. <laughs> Hopefully more, because I think actually a lot of people honestly like this map. If, if it's me, uh, God, I don't know what I would do. I feel like putting four people on the diamonds is honestly pretty good, because I would go 1-4-1 one, one because of you want to have people shooting these people off. If, if you're the one, if you're the team with the most people going for the diamonds, you're going to get the diamonds. Odds are very likely of that. Because it's not like space where there's like other ways to get the diamonds. It's it's pretty straightforward. It's up here, you know. If you, if you have the most players up here, you're getting diamonds. And, and two players up here is not going to get the job done, if you ask me. In which case, you're basically just, you know, wasting two players. Might as well just put three people on each side and have them go all the way around and try to get as many gaps and healing for the late game as possible. Am I right? I wouldn't do that. That's what I'm saying. I think you should have four people up here and try to dominate mid. Because 15 diamonds is a ridiculous amount. I don't know how much space it has, but that's got to be close to it. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it for Cavern. Very interesting map. I'm excited to uh, play this one.